One of the best ways to make any game look better is to create some custom shaders so that you can add some post-processing and some nice effects. And today I will show you how to create some 3D water. First we'll add some waves by modifying positions of the vertices, then we'll add some normal textures to actually make it look like a water, and lastly we'll make it so that the opacity of the water is changing based on the depth. In this scene I have just a character controller with some terrain generator, so if you are interested in generating procedural terrains, feel free to watch one of my videos. In the project I have a noise texture, I have a plane, which is just basic flat plane, but it is more high poly so that we can make the waves look better. Then I have two normal textures, you can use just one, but two are better. All of that will be for download in the description. When you import these two normal maps, you want to make sure that you set the texture type to normal map and we will start just by putting the plane to the scene and scaling it up. Now as we have put the plane in the correct position, we can create new material, put it to the plane and I will also create new shader, so create shader and we will create standard service shader which is already taking care of the lights and shadows for us. I will select the water material and select the shader, so we will do custom and then I called it water shader. And we can jump straight into the shader. I will first clean some stuff from the code that we are not going to need, so we can delete all of these commands. We also don't need the instancing and in the surface shader we aren't going to be using the texture, this is going to be controlled by normal texture, so we can just set the color to the color which we have in the variables and it should look like that. Now just quickly test if it is still working. So we should be able to change the color, yep, that's working. We'll begin by making the waves, so I will add four properties, one will be for the scale of the noise, then for the amplitude and speed of the waves, and the fourth one will be for the noise texture. So we have a property for the noise texture, scale, amplitude and speed. If you don't know about this, you can use the range to add a slider to the properties, which is pretty useful. And I also define these properties as variables down here, so that we can use them in our code. To make the waves, we'll need to adjust positions of the vertices, but in the surface shader, I don't think that you can actually do that, that you can move the vertices, so we'll need to add the vert function. To do that, we'll go to the pragmas and we'll add vertex function and I will just call it vert. And I will also add alpha so that we can later change alpha of the water. And now we can create the vertex function where I will define some parameters. So we have the vertex function, we have one in out parameter which is app data full and from this we can actually take position of the vertices and edit it. And the second parameter is the input which we'll later use to pass some information to the surface shader. We'll first need to get UV coordinates of the noise so that we know at which position of the texture we should be getting some pixels. So I will create float2, I will call it noise UV. This will be equal to float2. We'll take texture coordinates from the app data full, so we can do v dot text dot xy, and then we can do pretty much any calculation that we want. So to this, I will add the time, which is already made variable in the shape code, and I will multiply this by the speed, and multiply all of this by the scale of the noise. So now we'll have the correct texture coordinates on the noise. What the time is doing here is just that it will be moving like a waves should. Now we'll need to get the correct value from the noise that we can then add to the position of the vertex. So this will be of type float. I will call it just noise value. Normally, if you would want to get some pixel on the texture, you could just use the command text to d but in the vertex function we can't do that, we need to use text2d, LOD. And then we can just pass in the texture and the UV coordinates. So we are getting some pixel on the texture from the noise texture, then we have the UV, 
so we need to use float4 and then just input the noise uv and the other two values are on 0, 0. And from this we can get the x value, which is the red channel, because the noise is just black or white or grey, so the values on all channels are the same. It is always 1, 1, 1 or 0, 0, 0 or 0 0.5 and so on, so it doesn't matter from which channel we take it. And then I'm multiplying it by the amplitude. And now we can just modify position of the vertex, which we will take from the app data full. So we are setting the vertex position to the current vertex position plus 4 and the y value is the noise value. So let's see if it works. Yep, it seems that I have a typo here, so it should be text scored, just like that. And it is also telling us that the output parameter O is not completely initialized, but because we don't need it yet, I will just delete it from the vertex function. So just leave it like that. Yep, now we are getting no more errors. So we can apply the noise texture. And now we can see really subtle movement in the water. So we can increase all of these properties if we want. Increase the amplitude, for example. So now it is higher, we can increase the speed. So it is going faster and faster. And now we can see that it is shrinking and then it will be expanding based on the noise. You can play with the values as much as you want to create some really crazy looking water. But this water still really doesn't look like water, so let's add some normal textures, which will make it look a lot better. One thing that you can also do is change the smoothness to the one value, so that it is smooth like water should be. Back in the code, I will add two variables for the normal textures, and one variable for the normal strength. I deleted the main texture property, because we don't really need that, and added those two normal texture properties. The type is again 2D, and the default value is bump, which is like the kind of purple texture. Then I have added variable for the normal strength, which can be from 0 to 1, and I've also added the variables in the code here. And in the input, instead of the UV main texture, I have added the UV noise texture 1. And with what the surface shader helps us a lot are the normal textures, because in normal unlit shader it would be pretty hard for us to add them on our own. Here what we can do is just set the o.normal, then we can just say unpack normal, and input the normal texture that we want to use. But first we obviously need to again get the pixel on the texture, so we can again use texture D from which texture, I will use the normal texture 1, and at which position I will take it from the input, so the UV noise texture 1. And to have bigger level of detail on the water, to this normal map I will also add the second normal texture, so into the unpack normal we can just type plus, and then again we can use the text 2D, and take it from the normal texture 2, add the UVs of the noise texture 1, that really doesn't matter. And one mistake that I made in the shader is that I called the UVs noise texture 1 instead of the normal. So then it should look like this. I will also input it here. So we'll take it from the UVs from the normal texture, just like this. In Unity, we can see that it already changed a bit, but it will look even better when we specify these textures. So this is the first one and this is the second one, you can see that they are really big, but we can easily adjust this using the tiling properties, so I will set it to like 50-50, just like that, and now we can see bigger level of detail on the water. What we might also want to do is play with the normal strength, so back in the code we can just multiply these added values by the normal strength, just like that. Yep, yeah, now it is really bright, but you can adjust it however you want. And when we get into the game, we can see movement of the base a bit better. I've also changed opacity of the color, so we can see that we are able to see through the water when I set it to zero. And the next thing that we'll do is to make that the texture is actually moving on the water. And this will be pretty simple. We will just need to modify the UVs from which we are taking the position on the normal texture. So I will make it that one texture is moving across the x-axis and second one across the z-axis. 
and I will calculate these new values by using the sign of time, which will be going from 0 to 1. So I'm calculating two new floats. One is changing the UVs on the X and second one the UVs on the Y. So I'm just taking the base UVs on the X and to this I'm adding the sign of time multiplied by some number. For the Y it is the same. And then I'm calculating two different UVs, which should obviously be float twos. For the first one, if I want to be moving it across the X axis, I need to input the normal UVX, which is changing based on the time, and then the Y stays on the same. And for the second one, the X is the same and the Y is changing. So now we can just input it when we are taking the correct point on the texture. So the normal texture 1 is on the normal UV1 and normal texture 2 is on the normal UV2. And now we can see that even the texture is moving, which looks pretty nice and it was very simple to make. And now we can get to the hardest part, which is changing opacity of the water based on the depth. For this, we will need to first access the depth texture, which is automatically generated by Unity and it is being rendered in the camera. And this basically allows us to get the distance from which current pixel is from the camera, which is also used to determine if objects should be in front of each other or not. To enable the depth texture, you may need to add this small script to your camera, which is just setting the depth texture mode of the camera to the depth, but in my case it is not needed. In the shader code, I will add one property soft factor, which will be like a threshold that will help us to decide if we should be able to see through the water or not. So we have the soft factor property, which is just a float and also variable for it. Now I will create variable for the depth texture, which is already supplied to the shader by Unity, so we only need to specify it with the correct name. Just like that. Now one more thing that I will add to the text of the shader is to force no shadow casting, so that there will be no shadows coming from the water. So here we have the tag. And if the transparency of your water is not working, you might want to change the render type to transparent. Now we will get back to the vertex function, where we will again define the output parameter of the type input and I will call it O, so that we can later access it in the surface function. Now as we have defined the output parameter, we will need to initialize the output. So we initialize the output input parameter just like this. And now to this input struct, we can add two variables. One will be for the screen position and second for the eye depth, which we will later use to calculate the depth of the water. And right now in the shader it is giving us error because I just forgot to add comma here. So now we have initialized the output and we will be able to use the eye depth variable in the surface function. So after we initialize the output, I will compute the eye depth. And why are we doing it in the vertex function? Because it can't be done in the surface. Compute eye depth essentially calculates how far the current pixel is from the camera. And then we are setting it to the variable in the input. Now as we have stored the eye depth in the input, we can just sample it in the surface function. This is how we sample the depth texture. We need to supply the camera depth texture and then the screen position. I'm not a rendering engineer, so I'm not really sure how all of this works. I just know that the output of this is in non-linear space, so we'll need to convert it to linear space. And it is simple as that. We are using the command linear eye depth and then supplying the non-linear one. Whew, this was tiring. So I'm also then taking the value from the input of the eye depth and then we are actually calculating the resulted value, which is just the fade. We are using the saturate to make sure that it is between 0 and 1. And then we have just this formula, which I'm multiplying by the soft factor to make sure that we have some control over it. And now what we can do is set the alpha using this fade value. So I will just take this line, delete it from here 
and we can set the alpha to fade and I like to multiply it by 0.5 just like that. And to make it look even nicer I will multiply the normals by the fade value. So I will just move the calculation of the normals after we calculate the depth and I will multiply it by the normal strength and also by the fade, just like that. And now finally the water looks pretty nice. We can see that on the edges of the water we are able to see through it pretty nicely, but in the middle we can't see through it that well, which is supposed to happen because of the depth calculation. And if you don't like it like this, you can still play around with the soft factor to make it look however you want. Again, I'm not a rendering engineer, so there might be a better way to do this, but it took me more than 10 hours to make this water shader, so I thought that I would share my experience with shaders with you, and hopefully it will teach someone to make their own water shader. I hope that this video was useful, if you have any questions, drop them down to the comments, don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye! Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you are looking for a Unity, C Sharp or Bolt tutor, then I am here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my Gmail and take a look at my website for more info. I can help you with your personal projects or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.